Chris Biddles was a founding supplier to the Angus Pure branded beef program. He's a passionate believer in the prime beef industry. The Biddles Te Atarangi farm covers a thousand hectares on the western side of the Poto Peninsula. It includes 550 effective hectares on the home farm and 250 effective hectares of leased land nearby. A lot of it is marginal land, especially out towards the coast. We've grown over the 27 years that we've been farming. We've developed over that period and it's nearly finished. Very much a beef unit. We've got the stud operation, which is 220 registered cows. Uh, selling those yearling bulls and a few two-year-olds more to just to dairy farmers really, the two-year-olds left over from the sale. And then we've got 300 commercial cows, which are a mixture, and we're moving towards the Angus Jersey Cross, which produces a quarter Jersey, three-quarter Angus progeny, which are all finished. Oh, we mate a few of those as well. And then we buy and sell cattle as well. We buy some steers, buy some heifers, and. Unfortunately, we buy some of those horrible black and white Frisian things as well, which is done for money and no other reason. At the moment, we're on our southern boundary, right on the flat of the coast. And this is a piece that we've owned for about 12 years. We used to lease from the Crown for back in Mum and Dad's day. Mum got this in 1972, I think, as a lease. Young stock don't do terribly well out here. It's, um, it's not high. The pea levels of about eight where we're sitting here. It's just hellishly hard to buy um, reasonable quality steers and heifers now. You, you get a few coming out of some areas, but uh, it's, it's not easy. And, and this sort of country, you know, it, it lends itself to, to breeding cows. And so it's good to just to be able to breed your own. We finish everything ourselves, and of course we're buying in a lot of cattle as well. But the homebred ones do so much better than the cattle that you buy in. Yeah, I don't mind too much what a cow looks like as long as you put the right bull over it. Um, the the Hereford and Angus were, you know, that that's a fantastic cross, but the cows are actually just too big for the economics of it. As far as I'm concerned, they, um, you know, they they're not going to do 50% of calf. Weight and it's the same with the Angus. I mean, the, the Angus aren't going to produce the size calf to their body weight that these crossbred young Jersey Angus do. Well, this is our main finishing area, and, and we've got a huge amount of the farm set up that we what we call ASAs, allocated stocking areas, and some of it's GPS, but we've got a pretty good handle on how many acres in each block or how many hectares and then we allocate stock according to what we think that area will carry. And they vary, for, we weigh stock on, and it varies from over the gully just behind us. It's stocked at about uh, 550, 600 kilograms to the hectare with a mob of 130 odd animals. In the last couple of years, um, we, we Throughout the monitor farm time, there was a push for numbers, and we'd been too conservative before. We're going back the other way now, and we're trying to lift the performance. We need to be growing. A lot of these finishing cattle really should be doing probably 0.6 to 0.8 um, a day if you're going to get them up to the weights at the high-priced um, market rather than when everyone is killing cattle. We can't carry, we've got to get rid of these cattle before Christmas. Everything that we've got to kill needs to be gone by Christmas. So, yeah, and we're, we're struggling to do that this year because we've had such a bad um, autumn, unfortunately. <coughs> These are our stud animals. They're our rising one-year-old. These would be 10 to 11 months old, and they'll be at uh, 13 months going to the sale. And that's a sale for both beef farmers and dairy farmers. Those are the first uh, animals up at our sale. The top end, but not necessarily the best 20. It's a bit of a mixture, but certainly our best bulls are there. And we were just uh, looking at them from a cataloging point of view. I do that varying over a few months and see how they're comparing. And then we coppered them, um, two mils, and, and then weighed them. And it appears that they've been putting on about 0.65 a, a day. We need that for getting them up to the sale.
These are some animals that we're finishing to go to the works. They're out of the stud operation that are not in calf, they're, they're cull animals. Some of um, their mates have already been and, and dead and, and, and went into the stake of origin competition. Northland trialled the first ever stake of origin one, which was more emphasis on the taste and the smell and, and everything which the competition is today, the tenderness. And since it's been along those lines, the British breeds, and particularly Angus, has done extremely well. We do enter quite a few. We've been entering around 15 animals each year. And this last year, I think we, we had nine in the semi-finals and then, uh, um, I think, yes, and, and then we ended up with 25% um, of the finalists as well. If we go back, I think, three, three or four years, we were third in the best of crossbred, um, and then we won the best of British and won the overall stake of origin uh, three years ago, or two years ago, and last year we had an entry of, off the farm but was under the Neat Meat, uh, company's name and that came second in the best of brand. This year we had four entries with the Neat Meat Company and, and also did pretty well ourselves. Certainly the, the winning side is it's lifted our profile. There are some small premiums available for, for Angus Pure at certain times. It would be really nice if, if, if you got well rewarded for your quality. Un unfortunately, the current system doesn't reward quality. It uh, probably rewards um, amounts. And uh, so they need to be discounting the bottom end before they actually lift the top end. And they're a bit reluctant to do that because the meat companies want throughput. Um, but I think the time's coming. And certainly Angus, if you look at some of the Angus sales through New Zealand, I would think that the stake of origin, just the general eating ability of the Angus has lifted the profile of, of Angus and the stake of origin goes some way to determining that. So it's really satisfying, I guess. It's, it's, um, I wouldn't be farming if, if it wasn't for the satisfaction you can get and this is just one more that adds on to it. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.